I'm Rachel Chase, and it's so nice to be with you all here on the Atlantic Center for the Arts Facebook page. And um, in the future, you'll be able to watch this on YouTube as well. So today I'm um, going to be sharing with you a really special process that I love personally as an artist. And um, it's called the Mindful Mandalas Exercise. And for those of you who haven't met me before, I'm Rachel Chase, and I have been an arts and wellness ambassador with the Atlantic Center for the Arts for about mm, five years or so now. And um, I absolutely love sharing mindfulness and yoga and meditation, as well as artistic practices that we can do to express ourselves freely and to feel centered and calm and in the case of today confident to express the part of ourselves that um, feels courageous and to just be in a state of being where we can interact with art making without worrying about the outcome or what it needs to look like in the end um, so i'll be guiding us through this really beautiful experience today and for the next hour. Um, so you'll wanna make sure you have some art supplies and I'll just kind of take you through what I have here first. And then we'll do a little bit of breathing exercises to relax and we'll move the body a little bit again to just get some tension out of the body because when we do that, we're more able to be present with our artwork. We're more able to, to be with what we're creating and just let it flow. <laughs> so um, you'll want to go ahead and get some art supplies if you don't already have them on hand. I'm going to be using some watercolors today. So I've got just some regular watercolor paints and some brushes, some little brushes. And I've got some watercolor paper also. And it's just like this. And I'll probably be cutting mine down to a smaller size, but for now we'll just keep it like this. Um, and then some pens and pencils, of course some water to, to dip the brushes in, and some. I have a little towel over here that I'll be wiping my brushes on, so maybe get some paper towels or a little um, rag of some kind. Um, colored pencils, you may want to use markers too. I've got some markers on hand or Sharpies or pens. Um, we might make one or even two uh, pieces today. It just depends on how fast or slow you feel like working. Sometimes an idea comes through and it's just like, here it is, and then it's done and you want to start on a new one. Um, and other times we go slow and we allow ourselves to just allow the moment to guide our way, which is why I call it mindful mandalas. And I'll talk about what a mandala or mandala is. Mandala, mandala, <laughs> tomato, tomato. Uh, <laughs> and I'll show you a couple things. So here's, here's, here's an example of, of a mandala. This is called the Sri Yantra in yoga. We, you know, you have all these amazing, beautiful uh, symbols that we call it yantras, which are so it's a visual representation of an inner experience. And in this case, this is about appreciating the feminine energy. And so um, mandalas will usually have, you know, like a little center area and then it, everything radiates out from the center. But, you know, you can do whatever you need to do because this is all about creating allowing the process to guide your way as you go and and creating something that is going to be um, an expression of an inner experience and so i'll guide us through a little guided visualization or meditation when i use that word visualization some people say oh i can't really visualize i don't see it but you might think of it more like a guided inner journey of um of memory you know, when you have a memory or you think of a something that if you, if you think back and you remember a time when you, you ate an apple, you know, how it sounded and what it felt like and the taste. And maybe if you ever had like a 
fresh piece of fruit right off the tree, you know, and how that made you feel when you ate that piece of fruit. And you can go back there in your mind. And some of you might have like a real clear visual recollection of like the texture and the color and others might just remember the impression of the moment. And that's all that matters. And really that's what we mean when we say visualization. It's a process of going into the inner sight. So we'll activate the inner realms of seeing. I call it the inner sight. Or even your, we can say it's your imagination. So the imaginal realm, the imaginal realm is where we're going to be visiting together today. Just think about that, imaginal, that word. You know, butterflies, did you know this about butterflies? I found this out one day a while back. can't remember exactly where I learned it, but that uh, butterflies use something called their imaginal cells. So when a butterfly, you know how got the caterpillar, right? Creates the cocoon and inside the cocoon, the caterpillar transforms and then the cocoon is gone and the butterfly flies out. Isn't that amazing? So the, the scientists that have studied this phenomenon uh, have termed the particular cells that the butterflies use to imagine themselves into being their imaginal cells. Isn't that interesting? So we're going to be accessing our imaginal realms and this exercise is for all ages so if you've got your friends or family with you this is a great thing to do together highly recommend creating together but if you're alone this is totally going to work fine too i'm alone as well so we'll be creating together this way and you can come back to this video anytime and do this process again and again and see what how things change for you or not and um, see what else wants to come through the next time that you do this exercise. So first, like I said, we're going to do a little bit of mindfulness practice. And so mindfulness just means to pay attention to the present moment with an observing mind. So we kind of let go as best as we can to the judgment of whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, and we just allow everything to be here and that really activates that imaginal realm that helps to open up the creative energy so that we can allow ourselves to just express and let it come through into our art. So we'll start with the breath. We want to take a big breath in through the nose and release it out the mouth and if you're comfortable closing your eyes go ahead and do that. And inhale nice and deep and fill up your whole body and then exhale and release it out the mouth. Then you'll do that a couple more times, breathing in through the nose and out the mouth. And again, and now you'll just be there and relax your hands and notice that the breath is just going in and out naturally. If it wants to be a big, deep breath, let it. If it wants to just be a gentle, slow breath, allow that. Notice the sense of the air moving in and out. Notice if your body feels any tension or not. And bring your focus down to your feet, your inner focus. So again, we're, we're using our inner sight, our inner senses to focus down into the body and allow the breath to come in and out. So this is opening our system to the flow of the energy of the breath and just being present in this moment for one more breath. And then you'll gently open your eyes again and start to move your shoulders a little, releasing any tension in your shoulders, making some circles. If you wanna stand up, feel free to stand up. I'm gonna stand up for just a moment. 
I'm going to wheel my chair back here and stand up so you can still see me. And just move a little bit. Reach your body open, shake a little bit, maybe shake a little down, just to release some tension. I always like to make some sound too. So, ha, ah, maybe something like that, or, oh, 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 or be silly, you know, <laughs> just to get that lightening up feeling in your being. It's good to kind of just shake everything a little bit. <sighs> Don't worry, I won't take you through a whole dance choreography. <laughs> Just shake. Mm. Ah. Of course, if you come to one of my dance classes one day, we'll do more movement. All right. So you can come back sitting. Maybe look down for a moment at your feet and circle your ankles around. You know, that really helps to release tension in the body, too. We carry a lot of stress down in our ankles. It's a good thing to just give yourself some time each day to get grounded and and grounding can just be about focusing down at your feet and feeling your feet down on the floor and the connection of the feet and the earth. Mm, just feel that. And then that's the stabilizing force in the body. It helps bring us present. Sometimes just a simple activity when you're feeling disconnected or ungrounded. You can just literally focus down in your feet to bring you back in your body and to help kind of calm the mind. Good. So when we're calm, we're more able to access those feelings of confidence and courage and stability. If you think about like a Zen master or something, you know, the, the, there's a calm courageousness or a lion, you know, that is just sitting there and looking out over the tundra. There's a calm courageousness. So calm courage, see, they, they go together really. It's about knowing when to speak, knowing within yourself that this is the right moment to, to take action in your life. So we're going to start to go into a little bit of journaling for just a moment. I want you to get a piece of paper and a pen. I guess I didn't mention that in the very beginning, that <laughs> to get some paper. So, so if you... If you don't any, have any quite next to you, go get some paper and a pen or a pencil. And then I want you to think about, and this is going to be the visualization part, okay? I want you to close your eyes, or you can have them open, but maybe gazing off at something. See if you can access a memory or a time when you felt really good about yourself. Maybe a success that you've had just in the past year. Something that's gone well for you. Doesn't have to be a big thing, but maybe it was. Maybe it was a big event in your life. Maybe it was just one of those lovely moments when you had a really good sense and a good feeling inside of yourself about your life. And in a way, we can call that a success, you know? How do we define success, right? <laughs> so just think about that memory of when you felt really good about your life, that something was going well or something big happened that was like, ah, oh, this really makes me feel good about myself. I was able to do that. I was able to do that difficult thing, or I was able to do those things to take care of myself. Just think about that. Maybe it was a really beautiful conversation that you had with someone that felt really good and nourishing. 
maybe a few different memories come to mind. And then just, just write a few words down about that event, maybe some sentences. This is just for you. <laughs> Maybe there's a little list of things that you can think of that were successes from this last year. Take another 30 seconds or so just to jot down some things. And as you're doing this, notice how it feels to, to do this. Notice how your body is feeling. Then you're also going to write down a couple of words. Now, all this is going to be applied into our art making process here in a moment. This is part of the expressive arts process of feeling into our bodies and communicating through words. Write down a few words that describe how you're feeling right now as you think about this. Maybe a sensation you're having in your body or just a feeling in your mind even, or some thoughts that are coming that are new or inspirational insights. Maybe it's an affirmation of your ability to create, your ability to overcome your ability to feel connected and confident with who you are, that those memories as you access them bring you into this insight. Maybe it's a little short statement or just a couple of words. Maybe those feel like messages, perhaps, that you may decide to put into your mandala with words. We'll see what happens. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and move into the art making process now. And I just want you to get your paper, um, and you can use pen or pencil. To start, I'm just going to do kind of like a little sketch. And now remember, a mandala, you know, we're going to start in the center and work our way out. This is, a, this is quite a complex drawing, isn't it? But we don't have to get complex. You can't even think of a flower as a mandala. You know, a sunflower has a center and radiates outward. You can do like levels, an inner circle, outer circle, and outer circle beyond that. Or what I'm going to do is just kind of be free flowing and I'm going to start in the center and make a little kind of shape. So just start with a little shape and see what wants to come through and it can be anything at all. Right in the middle. Remember your art is going to communicate with you so right now you may have some ideas about the kind of imagery you want to make or you might find that as you make the shapes it starts to give you ideas to go off of from there. Kind of like a doodle. So from our center spot, let's see I've just made kind of like a little triangle thing, haven't I? So maybe I'll have three directions now is what I'm thinking for mine. You're going to start to radiate out and now I want you to kind of create a little pattern around it that sort of makes a little circle and then we'll go out from that and do a bigger circle.
and just a real light sketch can work. Just radiating out from the center here, feeling your way through. Make sure you're staying in your breath, you're breathing. You can take little breaks. Maybe a symbol starts to show, or maybe whatever you're drawing starts to take on a, a, a symbol that shows you something or makes you feel some, some particular way, <laughs> makes you feel something. And maybe it reminds you of, of another memory. Whatever motif you want to use, going to move to the outer circle too and just kind of start making a design very softly around. And then we're going to fill all this in with paint or markers or pens and just a little bit. So you want to get just kind of like a basic idea for your design here going. And I had did not premeditate mine. I did not know what mine was going to be. I'm in this process with you. Just creating. So now I've got a kind of um, idea of just a basic outline here that wanted to come through. And I think um, what's interesting that came through for me, so I want you to take a look and see once you get your basic design. And see if anything surprises you. See if what you're looking at, turn it around maybe. Oh, okay. What is this? What is this telling me? What is this showing me? How does this make me feel? So I've got some insights coming through from mine already, which is neat. And that is going to inform the colors I choose. So you're going to start to just work with some color now, whether it's paints or markers. Now, if you've never used watercolor before, it's, you just want to kind of get your brush wet a bit. And I'm going to use a blue color here to start. And then just put the water in your little palette there in the, in the color. Move it around so that it gets wet. Now you'll see that if it's really wet, it's going to kind of bleed around. But if it's if you kind of dab it a little bit, take a little bit of the wet off, touch it on your towel or something, it's going to be a little easier to just direct the paint. But it's a choice. It not, neither is better or, or worse. It's just a matter of playing around with it and seeing what happens. But go bold. Don't be afraid to really put the color on there. I'm going to start working from the outside in, in my case, but you might start painting from the inner circle out. Just see what wants to happen. Let the process guide you. You might start mixing different colors. What I'm noticing with mine is that this very peaceful energy feels like the ocean and the center ended up looking like a sand dollar. We're just activating our connection with our emotions here. Just playing, enjoying the process. I'm going to take us through another little visualization in a little bit. Kind of have a rhythm to our process today. But just going, going around your circle here or, or your shape. Maybe it's a little bit of a different shape than a circle that you've created. And filling in some color, maybe some outlining you want to do. 
with a different color or a different pen or something in a minute. Once the watercolor dries, we can do some outlining with some pens too, or markers. So just working your way around. Isn't it fun to just make art? <laughs> not about being a professional artist or anything, or maybe it is for you, but it doesn't have to be, you know, fine art. This is about something that's communicated to you that makes you feel something. Of course, you might end up making something you're very proud of, you feel good about, that's just lovely and connects you with a feeling of confidence, calm confidence. I'm just doing a little more watercolor here. Thinking about those messages that came through from your journaling while you do it. Those feelings of accomplishment. Those successes. Those times when you felt really good about yourself. Just invoking that and allowing it to be expressed in a symbolic way here through your art. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just going to take another little bit here to work through this outer ring that I've created. You might be working on like a little design or something that you made in the center or you know you don't have to do it in exactly the same way I am of course. It's all going to be a unique experience just for you so just moving the paint around here. So I ended up with some waves, didn't I? <laughs> some waves here. Makes me think of the ocean. The ocean makes me feel calm and confident, I realize, as I think about this. Maybe there's some something that comes to mind for you when you're in nature, you know. Maybe there's some natural elements that you can think of. Maybe when you stand next to a tree, it helps you make you feel strong and confident. So we're going to pause for just a moment. I mean, if you want to keep painting, feel free to do so. But I'm just going to invite us to take just a moment to pause. And then we'll come back to it and finish it in a moment. You know, in yoga, um, we talk a lot about this idea of energy in our systems and our body has these energy centers that we call chakras that um, this is an, a very beautiful way of imagining a mandala within our bodies. And we refer to this area of, of the body here, um, the solar plexus, right? You know, this, this area of our body is the center of confidence or will or um, a sense of I can do this you know and when we don't feel that we can do this we might feel a little weak in this area right or hunched over you know when we are worried or feeling like not sure our body tends to kind of go into a self-protection mode which is perfectly normal it's a reaction that we have when we 
are not feeling sure we want to kind of cave in or retreat, right? So a wonderful way to help activate the, the this confidence, the feeling of self-confidence or the feeling of I can do this is to open up the body a little bit and maybe put your hands right here on your belly. So I want you to close your eyes if you're feeling adventurous and go on a little journey with me and you can either have your hands here or just have them relaxed and I'm going to guide you through a little bit of a, of a self-confidence journey in your body for just a moment and then we'll come back and finish our work okay so take a breath for a moment and, and feel that part of your body and envision a big beautiful golden sun right there in the center of your body and when you breathe, I want you to feel that your breath is down there in that belly area, right here in that belly center. And that when you breathe in, your belly puffs out a little bit and your hands do too. And when you breathe out, you can go like this. It's like a cannon. We call it the cannon breath in yoga. And your belly goes in when you do that. So you breathe in through the nose and fill up. And then you go like this. And now imagine that there's this golden light there. And you can do one more cannon breath. You feel that energy in your body. And imagine that there's golden light in your hands. And that there's golden light in your belly and any other color you want to visualize. I want you to imagine it coming down from above your head like uh, waves or twinkles of light flowing down like water maybe. Waves of light flowing down into your body and filling up this area and making that sun even brighter and stronger in your belly. Making that sun brighter and stronger. And it's bringing the energy into your hands and it's bringing more life and a sense of feeling that no matter what happens, I am okay. And that's a sense of confidence and self-esteem that says, I can just be myself. So I can be myself and that is okay and that is also confidence as well confidence to just be ourselves it's called self-esteem we have this word we use self-esteem this term that we can just be ourselves and that is enough so take another couple of breaths here in the belly visualizing this light and you might even say some words to this area of your body that I can be myself and that is enough. Being me is enough. Feel your breath there in your body. Feel your hands. And now I want you to take that light, the imagination of your light coming down through your body and let it go down through your feet into the earth. Take a big breath and bring that awareness in and, and sigh. Ha. <sighs> and then literally rub your belly in circles. This is very soothing to the nervous system. And when we're soothing ourselves, it helps to feel that self-esteem, that I am here, I am here. And you can be confident to just trust yourself. That's the biggest confidence there is, isn't it? We can trust our inner knowing, our, our gut instinct, right? The gut is what gives us information. So you're connecting with your gut mind right now. <laughs> All right, great. All right, we're going to move right back into the piece now. And I'm going to invite you to write some messages in your artwork. I'm going to put some messages in there from whatever you just experienced. 
some words or maybe a three word sentence or a statement or an affirmation I can do this something like that or I am me <laughs> I get to be myself or just words that activate that feeling of inner strength and inner trust maybe another shape wants to be created in your mandala that represents that visualization we just did And you can write them anywhere you want. We'll just go about continuing to fill in some color now and decorating it and you know you might end up filling it in and then letting the paint dry again and going over the lettering again later maybe you're having some new insights about what it means to be confident sometimes we have preconceived messages that say confidence means winning or, you know, these ideas of a competitive nature. But I'm going to invite us to let go of the idea of competition. That there's no need to be better than anyone else in order to feel confident. That we can just let it be a sense of trust within ourselves that we get to be who and what we are without worrying if we're doing life right and we get to do it our way you know sometimes the greatest courage is when others are saying no you're doing it wrong you're doing it wrong and we can just be in our own inner self and say well that's maybe what they all think but I'm going to trust that I'm doing this my way and it's right for me. And that's what really matters. And that can take a lot of courage, huh? To, to really just trust ourselves to do life according to what we know is good and right for ourselves. Even when everyone else is saying the opposite, they think they know the best for us. and We can thank them. Right, so thank you for your input, and I appreciate that you're coming from a place of care and concern for me, or that you want to help, but in the end, really, we know what's best for ourselves, you know. Whenever I'm working with my students and clients, that's always where we're working toward, is getting to the place where we clear all that self-doubt such a more a free way of living really when we're not trying to follow everybody else's rules we're just doing our life our way <laughs> Mm. And sometimes it takes a while to process things, think about, you know, what we need and find out what those things are, find out how to give those things to ourselves, whatever that is, you know. 
good to think about those things. You know, what is it that I need to feel okay in myself? What boundaries do I need to create in order to cre create a, a container for ourselves that is safe or just that is um, not necessarily like a rigid wall where we push everyone away, but it's more like just a space where we can be with our own thoughts and decide for ourselves what's true for ourselves without all the noise from the outside telling us what we should think and feel and do with our lives. That's really when we can access that inner space of trust, create more trust within ourselves. Maybe as I'm talking about this, it's making me think of moments of insight for yourself. Let's see. I hope you're enjoying your art making process today. I'm enjoying sharing it with you. <laughs> And I keep working on it. We'll do another little visualization exercise at the end too today. Just keep playing with your colors and let whatever wants to come come through. No need to be perfect. Keep playing. I'll show you what I've got so far. I'm working on some outlining here and Filling in the shapes. Hmm, new colors are coming in. If you get to a, a, a point where you feel like you're complete with the one you're making, you might want to even start another one with some of the ideas that were flowing as we did some visualizations and recollections. Just keep working your way around around and around and around. Sometimes we can get caught up in little details. Keep working your way around and around and around. Moving, moving your hand, moving the color, seeing what happens. You know, sometimes when we're working we go, oh, I, I didn't want it to do that and well, just Go with it. Let, it. let it just be part of it. Maybe it ends up being a happy accident. Helps us let go of our perfectionism <laughs> when we just allow things to happen. Tolerate the frustration. <laughs> okay, well that happened. Well, I'm going to just keep going. It's that way in life, too. Sometimes the unexpected happens. In fact, probably more often than not, right? 
Who was it that said, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans? I think I've heard that attributed to Abraham Lincoln, but you might know of someone else who said it too. Yeah, that's the truth, right? And sometimes that can feel defeating, like, oh no, I, things didn't go my way, or, you know, which can affect our confidence too, but really it's about how do we handle those unexpected things that shows us what we're made of because life is by nature ever-changing right much as we want to control things and dictate the path <laughs> To make things go our way. Life just keeps on doing its thing. <laughs> so how can we roll with that? Let it be messy, because that's the nature of life. It's messy, right? Nature. Trees, they lose their leaves, they get on the ground. It's messy. Rather than trying to make everything so perfect, it doesn't mean we don't want to have a nice clean home and surroundings that make us feel peaceful, which is good for our psyche and our mental well-being. But it just means that things are going to happen that are beyond our control. I have a little mantra I like to use with my clients for that, which is, this is happening and I am with it. Here I am. This is happening. You know, there's things that we do have control over at times. It doesn't mean we have to just let everything fall apart if it doesn't need to. But if everything falls apart, sometimes everything just falls apart, you know. And it's in those moments when we learn really amazing things about ourselves. So maybe while you're making your art right now, you can think about those times when it was hard. Things were hard. But you ended up learning something about yourself. You ended up learning about what your beliefs and values truly are and what your needs are, what it is that you need in order to be happy, to be valued, to feel self-respect. You know. Those challenging times are really gifts. That's how we grow. That's how we grow through life, through the challenges. So just keep working your way around your painting, your drawing, whatever. Keep adorning it and adding some layers around, some outlining, some more color or really getting in there, letting the design get rich and filled in and decorated. Maybe it'll surprise you. You'll start adding little elements that are fun and exciting. <laughs> Expressive. Expresses an emotion, maybe, or just your hand wants to do it. Let your hand make that shape. Okay, got a little bit more time here. Now, of course, you may not finish this right at this time, at this in this hour. But you might get it to a place where you can definitely come back to it or just keep going after I'm done with this video. And get in there and finish it up. So this is where I've gotten to. 
and I've got some messages around the edge. I'll probably fill that in with watercolor and then go back in with a Sharpie and fill in some of the messages or not. I might just leave the pencil kind of in the background and let the words be sort of, um, you know, mysterious back there, not necessarily prominent. Or I might want to really pop some of those words, just a few of them. We'll see. Mm, it's just gazing upon what you've got here and giving it a look from different angles. Just feeling, feeling it, connecting with it. Mm-hmm. All right another minute to just play with it. See what else wants to happen there before we do our closing visualization process. So we've really drawn out some ideas today. Touched in with this idea of confidence and self-esteem or, you know, connection with that inner knowing space to trust yourself. Thinking about those boundaries too. What is a boundary to you? What does it mean to you to create boundaries that are healthy, healthy boundaries. If you ever want to talk more about those things, you're welcome to reach out to me. <laughs> Happy to connect with you further. Absolutely. Obviously, you can find me on Facebook and YouTube. and I have a website. It's rachelchase.com. Yeah. I love using creativity to access parts of ourselves that maybe we don't have words for. And using the body to help process emotions. And sometimes we don't have words for our emotions. We just have a feeling, right? Maybe they can feel a little confusing sometimes. But when we work through those feelings of stuckness, we can really access that sense of okayness. That no matter what happens, I'm okay with myself. Yeah. And that's my interpretation of, of confidence. You know, then we have the energy and the courage to take steps or to speak our mind, to know that what we have to say matters, right? So I do invite you to share about this experience with your loved ones or to talk with someone about these ideas and consider what this process has been like for you, what it did for you, how it, how it feels to make your own artwork around the messages that are coming through for you. It's just expressing giving you energy, hopefully. It's expressing how you're feeling. <laughs> All right, so let's just take a few breaths and close this process. You know, a lot of times when we are working on self-confidence, It's about trusting ourselves, and it's also about knowing that we're going to be taken care of, knowing that we have the resources inside of us. And so I just want you to, to feel into your body again right now. Notice what sensations are here, and take a deep breath. 
and sigh and allow any emotions to just come to the surface gently and make a, another sighing sound like ah like that ah, so that any heaviness or burdens can just fall away from you ah And now I want you to create an image in your mind of you. <laughs> As if you're there in your mind and you're, you're seeing yourself maybe in the, in the future, but not too distant future, like maybe even just later today or tomorrow. You see yourself in the future. And you imagine your body is filled with that golden light, that courage light from the solar plexus that we did earlier in that imagination space. And that your whole body is that mandala. So a mandala, you know, is this wheel, right? It's this shape that exemplifies wholeness, the circle. It's complete. So I want you to imagine you are there and you are complete. That your body is complete. That you're whole. And that you can see what it looks like in your mind's eye of you there feeling good about yourself. That you give good feelings toward yourself. That you give yourself reassurance. And just imagine how you look when you feel that way. You know, your energy, your smile, your calm courageousness like that lion <laughs> yeah you might even think about making a mandala that expresses that where it's like a shape of your body and you have energy all around it and you can put that somewhere and and see it and let it remind you of your confidence so this piece that we're working on today i invite you to finish it if you haven't already and then keep it out somewhere to remind you, like a little altar, a little creativity altar, to reflect back those messages that came through for you today about self-confidence and courage and trusting yourself so that you remember all those times that you've had those successes and those good feelings. And when we do that, it helps bring more of it into our lives. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, I'm Rachel Chase with the Atlantic Center for the Arts, and it's just such an honor and a pleasure to share space with you and create with you. And I hope that you have a beautiful and wonderful day. Atlantic Center for the Arts always appreciates your feedback, so please share how this experience has been with you, for you, what you received from it, any insights how you're feeling right now after having done this process. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.